There are potential spoilers for Alan Wake 2 in this video that I will be showing, and I would highly recommend that everybody plays this game. If spoilers do not bother you, or you do not care about spoilers, let us talk about how Alan Wake 2 is my comfort video game. Alan Wake 2 is a game that I can play when I'm going through spurts of melancholy, when I'm stressed out with life and the turmoil that comes along with it. It is also a game that I can play when I'm feeling burnt out. It's kind of like rewatching your favorite TV show where you know what's going to happen but all the characters and all the plot points pan out the same way that they, you expect them to. Or you're reading your favorite book and you want to feel now how that book made you feel the first time you read it. This is my relationship with Alan Wake 2. I'm going to be giving a very brief synopsis of the story now. So, you play as Saga Anderson, who is sent to Bright Falls to investigate an Ultra World event, or an AWE. She comes across a manuscript page written by Alan Wake, and later she enters an overlap. She goes through the tribulations of said overlap, and she comes through the other side at the waterfront of Cauldron Lake, and she happens to stumble upon the body of Alan Wake, who has finally come out of the dark place after 13 years. From this point on, we can now play as both Saga Anderson and Alan Wake. Through Saga's story, she tries to figure out what this cult of the tree is, and their story with uh, missing people and dead people and rituals in Bright Falls, in the surrounding area. And in Alan Wake's story, we see his trials and tribulations in the dark place. As I've stated, this is the the most stringent of synopses that I could give. There is still a lot more of information, and it's kind of like English without vowels. You would be missing most of the important details while missing those letters. I just really want people to play this game. That's it. <laughs> the settings of Alan Wake 2 really do scratch that itch for me. Whether it is the dark, damp forests of the Pacific Northwest to the twisted, tenebrous version of New York City in the Dark Place. They are both a place where you can wander and feel completely alone. Even in Bright Falls, while the town is populated, you feel like you're an outsider and the populace don't really conversate with you. They kind of talk through you. Then you have Wateria, a dilapidated town outside of Bright Falls with a community center, a lighthouse, which you have to have in Alan Wake, and the main attraction, which is Coffee World Amusement Park places where tons of people have been now, but it is completely empty and it's a ghost town. A lot of this game, especially during the gameplay, is just you. You're all alone in the forest outside of Bright Falls. You, all alone in the run-down town of Watery, and you, all alone in the dark place. For me, this is a time where I can finally wind down and take a break from the reality that we all live in and be a part of this dark, twisted, nightmarish but sometimes beautiful, funny, and light-hearted narrative, and especially in the visual storytelling. Before I get on to the conclusion of this, I do want to talk about the DLCs, because I believe that is one of the key points of replay value in Alan Wake 2, considering the game is, I, it took me, I think, 20, 21 hours to beat, so the DLC really is nice for replay value which at this point is just Night Springs DLC. There's only three episodes and they last to about 30 to 40 minutes. Episode three can lead infinitely depending on how long it takes you to figure out the puzzle near the end. But the visuals in Rose's number one fan, the first DLC is golden hour, very bright pink. It's kind of like with the golden hours, very familiar of uh, the Insomniac Spider-Man games and it looks really nice. Uh, the second DLC, which is Jesse DLC from Control, uh, very dark, very tenebrous as well. Uh, nighttime Coffee World, which is fantastic. The tension is really amazing, and they all tell really good, confined story stories, and it's really, it's really cool for a short 30, 40 minutes uh, adventure. And then the last DLC, which I mentioned previously being uh, very puzzle-oriented, trying to figure out your way out of uh, out of the dark place that you have been sent to. Uh, with at, at in that DLC, it's con uh, 
It's Sheriff Breaker. I always call him Conrad because I played Man of Adam. But the visuals in all three of those episodes are drastically distinct. And they are so amazing to, to witness. Especially playing Alan Wake where the visuals in that game and the base game are just phenomenal as well. So it's really nice how they kind of stepped up the game in the DLC. So I wanted to mention the DLCs before I got on to the conclusion of this. Alan Wake 2 got me through a very arduous period in my life. For me, the narrative is up there with some of the best TV shows and movies that I have ever seen. This game has shown me that no matter the time or the circumstances that anybody might be going through, you have to remain persistent. For me, I can play this game when I am in a time of distress and just need to calm down. At the end of the day, just take a step back and just breathe in some cool, crisp air.